How's it going, everybody? So today I'm showing you footage from an amazing dive I did a few days ago in Samboquita. That's on Negos Island in the Philippines, just probably about 15 minutes south from where I live. This is the jump off point to get to the famous Apo Island, which is a rightfully famous dive site. The harbor where the public boat to Apo leave is actually a, an amazing dive site on its own. And this is muck diving. So there's no beautiful coral reef, but there's sand, there's seagrass, there are a few coconut husks, and maybe, you know, some sachets and plastic bottles, unfortunately. It's not too bad, but in between all of these, uh, you know, little items in the, in the sand, we can find a lot of amazing critters. And one of the things we found during this dive was a newly prank and it goes by the name of Yoruna Funebris. And this is a Dorit. We will talk about the taxonomy of this animal later. Now, these newly branks are, you know, really prized uh, trophy critters among divers. There are few species, you know, mainly Philidia and Philidella, which are pretty common. But then there is an amazing diversity of these animals, which is, uh, so, you know, there are many rare ones among them. So you would uh, go on, uh, you know, hundreds of dives in a location and you would still uh, see new animals. Now, this species here, Yorona funebris, is not particularly rare, but it's not very common either. So it's uh, somewhat in between. What I find with these nudibranchs is that they're very, very, very specific in the ecological niche which they have taken up. So some of them would only be living on and presumably feeding on one particular sponge, or they would only be feeding on one particular ascidian, and you can always uh, see them next to that ascidian. And some of them exclusively live on, on one particular hydroid. Now, some of these nudibranchs are extremely small and they're very well camouflaged. So that's how they presumably survive. And that makes them a real uh, treat and it, it makes them very difficult to find them during a dive. So it, it really takes a, a very experienced spotter to find them. Other nudibranchs are actually quite striking in their coloration. They have these yellows, or well, this nudibranch here obviously has these very odd dots. It looks like it, so, as if somebody had taken a brush and you know, dipped it in ink and then put it on a, on a wet piece of paper. Very peculiar. So sometimes in nature, these you know, very striking colorations are warning signs that the animals are poisonous. So that it's not a good idea to feed on them for a potential predator. I know of a few studies with some of the more common nudibranchs that they are actually poisonous to fishes. Now, two things stand out when looking at the bodies of these nudibranchs, and one is the rhinopores, and these rhinopores are essentially the noses of the nudibranchs. So they don't see particularly well. They're either completely blind or they have you know, very rudimentary eyes, but they, they go by olfaction. And then the rhinopores do this job. And additionally, then where does the name of a nudibranch come from? So nude, you know, naked, a branch, you know, gills, you know, they have these naked branching gills, which are sticking out from their body and they are, you know, not in some body cavity. So this probably helps them absorb more oxygen in uh, situations where this is sparse. And it's definitely, it's really pretty to see their gills fluff around in the current. Now, what we have here we have a pair of these nudibranchs mating. Now, this is actually something really rare to see. I was really excited to find that. The 
copper climbed up onto the seaweed, and of course there, there's not a lot of movement. So what they do, the hermaphrodites, so each animal is a male and a female at the same time, and they would penetrate each other with this, it's called a pseudopenis, and they would uh, transfer the sperm into the body of the animal, of the other animal, and the, both of them would end up laying eggs. So. This is a rather interesting reproductive biology, and uh, this is also something they share with garden snakes. Okay, let's look at a little bit of phylogeny. So let's find out what kind of animal we were even looking at here, or what kind of animals we were uh, watching mate. Now, this is the family tree, also called phylogenetic tree, of all animals. Of course, at the bottom, the most primitive animals are the sponges, a little bit more complex in their build, uh, the cnidarians, the jellyfish, anemones, corals. Above that, we have the bilaterian animals, which are the, the more complex animals. There is this branch here, which contains the chordates, which contain the uh, vertebrates and mammals, us, the echinoderms, the sea stars, and there's a second big branch with a lot of invertebrates. Invertebrates just means they don't have a backbone. That's, you know, like a very general term. Among the invertebrates are the annelids here, which contain the earthworms and the mollusks. These nudibranchs, of course, are mollusks. Now, there are actually a number of different mollusks. This is a collection. I will link to that below the video a collection of mollusks which are photographed over the years. And they contain a number of very interesting animals. Here you see these cephalopods, the, you know, these large cuttlefish. You see an octopus here. So the cephalopods are one group of mollusks. Uh, second group are these bivalves. So you see these giant clams here. But, you know, these are uh, the largest uh, living clams, but they're of course, many different species of clams, many of which you have probably eaten at one point. And then uh, there are a number of smaller groups and the gastropods. And the gastropods contain both, you know, your regular standard garden snails, which eat your lettuce, as well as, you know, the shelled gastropods, like these cassis here, as well as all these nudibranchs. So, Nudibranchs. This again is a collection of animals which uh, I photographed over the years. All of them are nudibranchs. There has been a massive adaptive radiation, especially in the Indo Pacific. So there are several thousands of species of nudibranchs. They are often real food specialists. They would only feed on one type of ascidian or on, on a sponge. Some of them are these famous solar powered nudibranchs, and you can see one here. This is a uh, such a uh, Philodesmium solar powered nudibranch. They uh, take up small algae which they feed on, but they don't uh, completely digest them, but instead they store the algae in their ventricles of the intestinal system, and basically the, the algae grow while they're in that nudibranch animal. So very large group with an enormous number of species among scuba divers. This is really kind of a, a trophy hunting sport. How many of these can you spot and photograph? And what specifically were we looking at? As I've mentioned, Yoruna phonebris, which belongs to the Dorites. Uh, this is distributed all across the tropical Indo-West Pacific. So uh, here, you know, there are images from New Caledonia, the Great Barrier Reef, and of course we've seen them in the Philippines. So I hope this gives you a little bit of a, an idea what kind of strange animals I had filmed, and um, I hope you like the video. Like, subscribe, comment, send me fan mail, and. Um, See you next week.